With that note, let's get into the next panel discussion, very interesting one. And let's quickly call the panelists and from there on, actually, first call the chairperson, the moderator, and she herself will take it into the panel discussion. So please welcome our CEO of uh, The Glitch, that is uh, Pooja Jory, our moderator, and she will introduce the panelists in take it forward from here. So over to you, Pooja. I hope you're doing great. Thank you, Mithun. I'm doing very well. I'm going to get right into it because we're running against time. So hello, everybody. I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking forward to having this discussion with all of you. Um, I am Pooja Johari. I'm CEO of The Glitch. We're a gender-blind, inclusive, progressive, high-performance workspace. And welcome all of you to the Twitch CMO Summit. Okay, today I'm going to get, uh, you know, we've got a brilliant set of panelists, some who I'm, I'm, I'm big fans of. Uh, and I'm going to start introducing them right away. Bidisha, who brings in over 25 years of cross-industry experience in marketing. She joined Schneider Electric India as CMO in 2016 and runs the marketing function for the company. Welcome, Bidisha. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, hi, and hello, Samir. Uh, heading marketing at policybazaar.com. Samir has extensive experience in leading the brand and consumer marketing, digital marketing, media planning, and investments, market research, and social media initiatives. Well done. Welcome, Samir. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thanks for having me. Moving on to Sandeep, who's responsible for the development of global branding, marketing, communication initiatives at the Jaguar Group. Sandeep has been a crucial player in establishing the Jaguar Group as a leading global brand in the complete bathing and lighting solution space. I'm very excited to speak with you, uh, Sandeep. Moving on, to, moving on to Supriti, who is head marketing at Consumer Healthcare and Lupin Limited. He has more than two decades of experience in brand marketing of consumer healthcare, FMCG and food. Excited to have you on the panel as well. Thank and you, Pooja. Hi, Gaurav. Gaurav leads the Times Network revenue team and is responsible for driving monetization strategy and overall business growth for the network's bouquet of channels. It's a great group of people and we're going to have an interesting discussion on building brands on English news. Now, English news in India opens doors to a very interesting cohort. Uh, the genre has very often, and I've been part of these meetings, they've touted to attracting HMIs and influential millennials. However, it is a cluttered and noisy medium, at least a few of them, right? So let's start with, and I'm going to go one by one, how important and relevant is English news as part of your media plan today? So Bidisha, may I start with you, please? Sure. Uh, can everybody hear me? I'm just trying to... Uh, yeah. Am I audible? Yes, very okay. well. Well, you know, um, I think, I think uh, you know, with the... And when I talk about English news, I'm talking about cross platforms, right? It's not just television or print or, or the internet or, you know, consumption on mobile app platforms, etc. I think uh, uh, you can't, you know... Uh, I, I'd like to break this up into two bits, right? One is the news itself. Uh, you know, uh, and 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 the penetration, etc. Right? I mean, we are we are set to reaching about uh, one billion uh, internet users by 2025, and uh, and and of course, you know, uh, English news plays a very important role in uh, reaching out to all those people. The other important thing I believe for English news is, you know, when I look at the consumption of English news versus entertainment or sports, I mean, it has a it has a low shelf life, you know. If you don't consume news then and there, then it becomes stale news, right? So, to that extent, I think there's a huge opportunity to uh, to leverage uh, the, the the nature of 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 the you know of the content itself, and uh, and and that's why it becomes a very very important part of any media plan. And here I'd say. Uh, the other, you know, the other great thing is that today the way consumption of news has happened is completely democratized, right? I mean, Twitter can be a medium for English news, you know, of course, the in shots and the mobile app and all that is there. So we've seen a huge evolution in the way English news is, is consumed. I mean, that's, that's my two cents on this. Thanks for that. In fact, I am going to cover the evolution of the news as we move forward. And Vidisha, I'm going to come back and, you know, pick and double click on that a little bit. Sandeep, may I move to you now? I've seen you everywhere across 
uh, a lot of the English news and I'm, I, you know what I can, I'm making an assumption to say that it is an important medium for you. Um, how do you, how would you like to back up what Vidisha has just said? You're taking from what Vidisha was saying. See, uh, Jaguar is into bathroom and lighting. And if you see this category, uh, uh, if you see India is the only country where you do advertising, and where B2C advertising, you make TVCs on a product like uh, bathroom products. World over, there generally is more of a product film. You talk to plumbers and all. So largely the TV and that too, uh, English news was there to set the narrative, you know, in terms of the audience were, you know, uh, who really were the early adopters. But what, unfortunately, what has happened that today, because not only the advertising on TV or, for example, gives you a higher recall for a category like uh, bathroom where we don't have a tons of money to spend. So it's, you know, it keeps you on the top of mind recall awareness and you're building a category, which is very functional to an aspirational. So you need a help of a TV, which is the last screen. Yes. Digital as, as Vidisha is saying, you don't have to see news from a, only the prism of a TV. There are OTT, there's a digital, there's a social media news. And actually the whole, I think the construct of news has changed. It has become more of a news analysis, you know, uh, news today is available, you know, by the time, you know, a, any city get bombed or any news thing happens, you know, the, the people on social media tells you. So, you know, we just only do a postmortem on, you know, all these channels, you know, I've seen a lot of these OTT platform, they only pick up those relevant news only section, which is available for you. So as a brand, uh, we, we largely on TV and uh, largely on news, whether it's a social media from a two perspective, one is a higher recall. Uh, for the brand, for a brand, which is a niche category, which has to be on the, uh, always on the top of the mind. And you cannot afford to be on a GC or, a, or a large budget, uh, marketing activities. Second, uh, more, more, you be there on an audience, which is, uh, the, the trend setters, you know, the narrative setters, which is H and I is the who's and who's in the country. And typically you see with English linked with that kind of a perspective, right or wrong is a different subject. But that's the reality of the matter. So yes, uh, news is very, very important. English news is very, very important. But uh, the dynamics are changing now. Yeah, because you, if you really see that, uh, as compared to Hindi news, uh, English news was even less than one percent. So it was never a reach business. It was always an impact business. So uh, from the impact point of view, yes, uh, we consider English is very, very important for us as a category, uh, and news particularly in say that. Thanks for that, Sandeep. In fact, I'm going to come back to you as we get to the end of the session, because I want to talk about really the advice this group will have for how English news is now evolving. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you. Keep your, keep your points ready. Um, Samir, I'm going to move to you. And Gaurav, I'm going to come to you absolutely last, yeah. because I know you have a lot to say here. So Samir, over to you. How important is this medium for you? And what are the newer things that you'd be able to add to this discussion? Well, so while the fellow panelists have already touched upon the premiumness of the audience and that could be one of the reasons why advertisers are attracted to the medium, I would also like to draw the attention towards a slightly different uh, reason why maybe advertisers like us would want to do it. So to give you some perspective, Policy Bazaar is, a, is not a seasonal advertiser. We are on television for 12 months a year and uh, we are predominantly HSM driven in our media planning. Uh, we don't do very regular regional advertising. So what English news does is it, it democratizes the audience a bit. It cuts across language boundaries also. So which means that I do get a fair bit of exposure in the south of India as well. While I'm not regularly doing uh, regional campaigns in Tamil Nadu or Andhra, for example. Uh, that does mean that, you know, that audience is still reminded of me on and off, even though I'm still not very heavily invested in terms of media in those markets. So that is one. And in terms of what new, uh, maybe I would want to expect from uh, the genre, a couple of things really. So I think uh, the genre has done very well in terms of capitalizing on the prime time. Uh, I don't need to say there much, say much there. Uh, but in terms of, I think the weekends, uh, I think there is an opportunity to bring out a lot more feature-driven shows uh, during the day as well as during the evenings because I think maybe those time bands are slightly underutilized. Mm. And uh, if I may, I think maybe it's time to look beyond debates for prime time. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. Uh, but thanks for that, Samir. Uh, Supratik, 
over to you for you know from really from a large client who who spends a lot in this medium across TV. What are, what are the points that you'd like to add here? Yeah, I think uh, see if you look at the fundamental of our media plan, and if you look at just uh, like uh, I think Sandeep and Samir talked about it. Is that if you look at a fundamental of a media plan in the sense of reach, frequency, and the cost of contact, the English news would not make sense in those numbers, but you need to look beyond those numbers. And if you start looking at beyond those numbers, then you see some interesting pattern. See, if you look at news as a genre, and is, if you look at the entire TV audience of the total population, around 90% watches TV. Okay? You break it down to news audience, out of that 50% watches news. But if you come to English news, it is roughly 5%. Uh, but interestingly, when you see that 50% cut, which is at a all news level, the male skew is 55% and the female skew is roughly around 40 to 40%. But when it comes down to English news, that, that, that skew is not there. So it's as good as a male audience, as good as a female audience. So there is, so actually, if you look at a news as a medium, you not only reach the premium audience, which is the NCTS A182, you reach 40 plus, but you also reach a better female audience, which is an interesting thing to look at. The second part is that uh, if you look at uh, the entire demographic, the way it has been changed, uh, if you, there are reports like between 2005 to 2018, uh, today the bottom of pyramid is not the biggest of the chunk. The middle of the pyramid is bigger than the bottom of the pyramid. In 2005, the bottom of the pyramid was around 70% of the population. Today, it has come down to roughly at a 40%, and the middle of the pyramid is bigger than that, uh, 50%. So a lot of English consumptions are happening. Uh, as, a, as The language is getting better penetration in terms of the education. The language is get a, getting a better penetration in terms of the content consumption, which Bidisha was talking about. So today, English is not something that the, the consumers are afraid of. 10 years back, 20 years back, there was something kind of a kind of phobia around the language. But I think that phobia is not there. It has well penetrated. Uh, the last point I would like to make, uh, there is one more interesting thing, and I, I think Samir is here, and he would echo what I'm saying. That if you look at the Hindi advertisement, and I was looking a uh, little bit of Mitch's data before coming to this panel, almost 40% of the advertisers are uh, advertising in Hindi language in the English channel. And that's a great insight to look at, that why they are doing it. Because even though, uh, like, why would anybody who would be advertising an English channel would be advertising a Hindi communication or, or running a Hindi language communication? But I think the insight lies in there that, okay, it makes you, even though you are there as an English audience, but still the strength of the language, which is the Hindi or the regional language, is still there. So it's a kind of balance which creates. Uh, so... At the end of it, I would like to conclude that my two cents is that, okay, it's a channel which creates certain interesting demographical parameters. And if you are talking to a particular class of people, and it should flow down from your brand strategy. It's not that I would pick up a genre because it's doing well. The entire genre selection would flow down from your brand strategy. And if the brand strategy demands that genre, then it's an interesting genre too. Of course. Yes, thanks for that. So far, Gaurav, we've spoken about evolution of English news. We've spoken about how it's been segmented, also how the importance of it or lack thereof. And how, and you know, since we have you on this panel, how is this medium evolving today? And, you know, and things that you guys have planned that's going to make it, that's going to make it an attractive medium for advertising, continue uh, to make it an, an attractive medium for advertisers. Yeah, thank you, Pooja. Uh, firstly, I must compliment you. You have a news person on this panel and you have kept him quiet for 15 minutes. Oh, for I'm that. having a good evening. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Uh, see, as an evolution, I would say that uh, news has evolved definitely in the last, say, 15 years. And, you know, I've been fortunate to be part of that evolution. I remember when we had launched Times Now, uh, almost 15 years ago, we went to the market saying that, you know, in India, news is all about reporting facts and, you know, taking that forward. But here we come forward with a new format of a channel that will not only bring the facts, but we'll start moving from news to views. We are the first channel to actually in India bring forward views as a big 
game changer. And there are not many channels who were doing it. One of the competitive channels used to do a weekend show with you know twenty people sitting in a uh, in a room and discussing subjects. But it was once in a week. We said we want to change the narrative. India can't work at that pace. We want to discuss threadbare issues that matter to us then and there. And that's where we launched Times Now, being in the now zone. We said we want action now. We want to discuss it now. We want to bring it forward now. So that narrative changing actually started 15 years ago. And today, if you see what Times Now was doing 15 years ago, almost every channel is doing that. Evening 8 to 11 is only debate. But when this started, it was a novel idea. So that's where it started. Moving forward, I mean, the evolution is in the fact that news as a medium, as a category, is all about being in the now. And you develop the now in very many ways. So today you have the you have the benefit of technology and you use technology to make your now even more relevant. I'll give you a small example. Uh, maybe I'm sharing, sharing a bit of our trade secret, but we partner with Twitter in a very, very deep way. This started many years ago. So what we do is we actually through our, we have a massive backend team, right? Who picks up news and stories on a daily basis. So we actually put those stories up on Twitter on a daily basis in the morning, maybe half a dozen stories are put, 10 stories are put up. And then we start seeing how the stories are trending. And you know what, when you put the story of Mamta having an accident or whatever, she was attacked, you don't know what was the truth, right? So we start seeing whether that story trends or, you know, evening some player is dropped from a cricket match, will that trend more? So by the time you come to about 5 p.m., we already know what the nation is thinking, if I can use that term, right? And when you go back home in the evening, we pick up three out of those six, seven subjects and we start doing debates on that. So you know what? You have already been part of the narrative because somewhere down in your canteen, in your lunch, uh, you know, or at the coffee, you have seen some, you have posted something, you have commented something, and you actually helped us decide what story is of interest to you. So if Mamta breaking her leg is more interesting than a cricketer drop from a team, you know, that comes up for debate in the evening. So the evolution has changed in such a way that we are harnessing the strengths of technology in real time to bring forward news that you think is relevant for you. And you know what? You helped us decide that. So sure, to that extent, that evolution has already uh, taken shape. Moving forward, we see uh, technology playing an even bigger role just not being part of the content creation machinery, but also like some of our, my fellow panelists mentioned, as part of the content distribution machinery. So uh, that's really where uh, the next level of realization is expected to come and getting more real time, getting more in, involved in conversations. For example, on uh, our news channels, we have a very interesting service. On some of the bigger issues, we actually give a opportunity for a viewer to ask a question in live to an anchor or to a guest. Of course, there is screening happening. Nobody should come forward and ask a stupid question. But yes, once you screen that, it's, the real time is in as, as little as two minutes, you can actually come on board and ask a question of an anchor or a guest. So we're okay. again trying our best to get closer to the consumer, closer to the viewer, and you know, bringing that forward. So Thanks. those are some of the things that we are busy with. Thanks, Gaurav. Thanks for that. Vidisha, I'm going to come to you. You know, when you spoke about evolution the last time you were talking about the importance of being on this medium. How really, what is your, if you had to give inputs to, you know, this, this genre to make it extremely attractive for advertisers, what, what are the kind of changes that you would like to see on this medium or evolution that you'd like to see on this medium? You know, um, uh, again, I'm, I'm, talking, uh, you know, I represent uh, a, a very strong B2B company in the, you know, in the energy efficiency space, etc. So for us, uh, the digital platform is uh, perhaps more uh, relevant today uh, for a B2B customer than a television uh, platform. Uh, I think, I think, uh, you know, uh, what is what I'm seeing very interesting today is snapshot of news, you know, if you look at the consumption of news today, uh, perhaps people had more time in the past to, uh, you know, enjoy their cup of tea, pouring over a newspaper, you know, consuming content, or in the evening, the family gets together and watches the news on television, etc. Now that continues, but there is a layer on top. And I think that's something that we constantly need to look at, which is 
how are you uh, slicing and dicing news by uh, personas, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I know of somebody who had very interestingly started a news platform, a digital uh, news platform for just the working woman, you know, keeping in mind that the working woman, you know, is always rushed. So what is the five things that uh, she needs to know to empower her for the day, you know? Personalized um, news. Personalized news, exactly. You know, uh, I mean, today we push. I, I push my daughter to keep reading news. You know, and uh, you know, what is it? How how do you how do you slice and dice news by persona? I mean, to me, that is something that I'm constantly looking at, and that that probably is the next stage of evolution of the way news is going to move from where it is today uh, to perhaps in the future. I mean, that's my 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 point of view on this. I like that, Vidisha, personalized news, right? I, I, I would like that as well, to get snippets of what someone's learning or what I'm interested in and giving me that. I think Google is doing that well, um, you know, on, on, on what comes on our homepage. But yes, it'd be interesting to see that from main news channels as well. Yeah, I think I just want to add one more thing. You know, credibility, source credibility is very, yes. very important here, right? Because today news is coming to you from every side. I mean, whether you're on your... Uh, I, for example, consume Facebook as a newspaper. I get my top news in the morning, you know, just, just going through what's going on or from Twitter. So since news is going, uh, you know, coming to me from every, every side, I'd love a very credible source, which I can build up credibility, which can build up credibility over, over months, which just speaks to me because the world is moving to personalization, whether it's shopping, whether it's uh, entertainment, whether it's what have you. So why, why shouldn't news be? That's my point of view. Thank you for that, Disha. We're, we're running out of time and I have so many questions for all of you. So I'm going to move quickly now to Samir. Samir, the last time you made a point, you know, you did speak about evolution as well. What are your inputs on how this medium should really grow to keep it more attractive? Uh, sorry, Samir, you're on mute. I'm extremely sorry. So, see, television is a mass marketing medium, right? So, personalizing experiences or personalizing content consumption is very tricky on television particularly. But borrowing a bit from uh, what uh, Vidish also said, uh, digital uh, news consumption is, is, a, is an opportunity where you could personalize uh, news uh, serving as well as consumption. I'll give you an example that could really get me and a lot of other advertisers very kicked. Uh, various, uh, you know, digital platforms through various signals are able to identify which audience is intending to buy which category, right? What if I were to identify the intenders of my category and serve them a piece of news, which would influence them to buy a certain category? We're already doing it with advertising, with banner ads and everything else on digital. What if a simple news article is also served to a category in tender? Because those signals are already available. Those signals basis what has the person searched in the last few days, what has the person consumed in terms of content over the last few days, etc. So I think uh, those personalization opportunities are more relevant for the digital news space than the television news space. So, yeah, I, I think uh, that is something that could get me really kicked. The more focus on digital, more focus on personalization is what we have so far. Sandeep, how could you add, please add to this? See, as an advertiser, I think, uh, you know, uh, is for me, as I think one of my fellow panelists has said, that I think the job is to reach out to your right audience in the, you know, uh, in the most cost effective way. So it's up, see, it's very difficult for me to talk on news as a whole, you know, because see, eventually news is that what we listen and what we see is the reflection of the society. If people want the same Shashant Rajput debate for, you know, almost 24 hours into six months and same panelist, you know, you, at, at the end of the day, commerce takes over. But see, I think if I say uh, news for me as an advertiser, because, you know, the, as I'm also in a cusp of a category, which is both B2B and B2C, Idea is to always top of the mind recall for the customers. So whenever you are into that buying space, you consider Jaguar as a brand. So obviously, depending on, see, we have artists, which is luxury segment, Jaguar is premium, Esco for masses. If, for example, if I say English news as a genre, okay, obviously I have to see in digital, 
yes is a great recall but you can't build brand on digital i am i'm a i'm a slightly old school thought you know you have to build brand in the right context so if you have a 10 panelists you know trying to kill each other and you know there is a 10 minutes 2 minutes break and you want to have a respiration light doesn't cut across you know uh, if if that's that's the audience then you have to see whether your brand fits in there so i think more you have to really study rather saying you change the news change the format i think it's very important that you be contextual you have to be very clear that what kind of an audience coming and watching for example english was english news was largely an impact in india you have to build brand from the top uh, and in that case uh, you you need an audience which for example today case in point the 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 original english audience is is no more a fad now i'm sure in a coffee discussion you will never see in a cafe they i watch news you know, i want english news you know you will be like a you like you know from a dinosaur age you know people really they may be watching but they will never commit that they watch news because news just news is something which is not something which is very very important for them in the format which currently is there digital always a challenge even for the news for that matter all ott platforms that you know how i will fit in as a brand you know uh, uh, so you know in in terms of recall yes digital is a great medium i think the way the news is consumed on a on a daily basis whether it's facebook whether it's insta whether any twitter any any medium for that matter or the digital platforms or a lot of tvs uh tv news tape channels i think what primarily is important that you have to really study the a particular news genre you know hindi was hindi news was always about volume and reach english news was never about that so if i am on english hoping to build my brand in an aspirational way i have to talk to a really high end segment of customers there maybe the uh, some customers are there but the context is not there the kind of a conversations you know the kind of a topics are discussed Uh, the way your brand is inserted during the breaks we need to find much more innovative ways by which you know you know more contextual the challenge is there you take up a great uh, topic and you run it 3 o'clock in sunday who going to watch that so there is a challenge between you know numbers you know the reach and the context so i think somewhere i think some of the channels i am sure um, they have good content also i think we do have to really believe in that is not we, if the the whole challenge today is chasing the the value and volume together news should refrain from especially if i am going back to tv again and again uh, digital there is no debate uh, digital is is something get consumed and you will have your brand inserted in a way but if i go a big box a standard tv advertising which is still the cheapest is still the cheapest still the biggest reach uh, digital still doesn't give me that kind of a reach if if we if we can bring more contextual if we can bring more of a in a good environment the brand is get inserted more innovative i still remember i think uh, uh, i think the modi was supposed to make announcement on uh, uh, you know on a particular date i think was second or third lockdown and something to do with made in india i could see around this phase there are 40 brands screaming vocal local you know now you know this is not the place to build brand you know that that is digital is good for me hoardings are good for me i think we have to go back to original uh, you remember the the kinds of ad we remember of some of the classic ads they built from the tv i think tv somewhere have to stop chasing the volume game i think the platforms are digital the ott is where you can have numbers but when it come to tradition, traditional advertising i think i think tv should chase more of a value than volume thanks a lot for that that was that was that was insightful and i i'm sure a lot of you agree with uh his point of view we just have one more minute before we we close in and move on uh subhrithik a quick closing statement from you before i you know try and wrap up with gorav yeah on so what was the question just if you can repeat that what was the question initially you started asking question is on how would you like to see this medium evolve and okay. if you just give me a quick a quick pov on it that would be amazing okay so that enter pov is basically my first uh, it's not my personal pov is the as an advertiser uh, so you are asking for advice how to make the channels better the english channels uh, because you were saying that there are certain channels which are loud uh, question back to goda would they listen to the advice I, i think i have a contra view i think the news channels are now as entertaining as a gc okay and as an advertiser it benefits me because if you look at the covid period that as a journal i am not talking about english only as a journal the journal had basically garnered the highest viewership growth which of any other journal okay uh, it it uh, pandemic definitely helped help but at the same time the numbers are in, in favor of the news journal 
because it is becoming more entertaining because it is more uh, whatever way the entertainment comes at a cost of uh, you know journalism the entertainment cost, uh, comes at the cost of uh, distortion of the fact and all but an, as, as an advertiser that's okay with me as long as it gives me the rating it gives me the uh, bang for the buck so that's my contra view thank you I Thank you so much. Gaurav, I'm really sorry I have to wrap up. So quick note from you on the things that you guys are doing to make it more attractive. Well, uh, see, as a, as a channel, as a network, we believe that English news as a combination, I'm saying English news, it includes uh, Times Now, uh, Mirror Now, and, and uh, you know, ET Now. We, what we do best is we help set the narrative. Narrative of the nation, narrative of the brands, and we take it to consumers so they can buy into it. Once you buy into the narrative, then you go with what the product or what maybe even the PM is offering, right? So the narrative building is really the strength going forward. So that is something that we are really heavily focused on. Also, like you said, uh, uh, we will also be using a lot of technology going forward to dissect, maybe do region wise, etc., to do some contextual, you know, news where relevant, more on the digital format. But TV will remain, you know. Uh, and I agree with what he said. Uh, you know, TV news is all about reality, emotion, drama, entertainment. And why not? I mean, that's what the consumer wants and he follows it. He likes it. I mean, the news consumption today is probably five times more than what it was six years ago. So people want it. People catch it up. So that we're giving them what they want. Of course, there should be no distortion of facts. But having said that, we really are on the ball. And we are continuously coming with newer, newer formats. For example, uh, when most people in India were talking about COVID and what it is doing to them in life, we are probably one of the few companies that came with a COVID predictor, which was predicting state-wise the COVID cases four weeks from today. And we were giving those reports to the PMO's office as well as to the chief ministers. So they can then plan whether our states are going into an emergency situation or not. And we were almost 90% accurate on that. So, you know, we are again using the power of news. Like, like uh, we talk about internally, you know, you, it was like a CSR for us. You know, there are companies who donate money, right? We believe we have an excess of intellect. So we donate our intellect in this format to the government and to the PMO. So they can face this situation better. So that's it from me. Thank you everybody for taking the time today and, and thanks so much for accommodating you know, the rest of them because I know we don't want to make people wait. So thank you so much, everyone. It was great chatting with all of you. Have thank a good you. evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you, Sandeep.